I don't think it's any secret that Zelos has a loyal following, and I think their latest watch, the Nova, is more or less a love letter to those devoted fans, to give them a dress watch to complement their favorite diver. The Nova's been in development for quite some time now, and I personally think it's one of the more interesting releases they had planned for this year, as a lot of us watch geeks were just curious on how a design language that was developed on divers would translate to a dress watch. And in a lot of ways, I think this experiment is a great success, but maybe not in the way that some people would expect, but we'll get to that shortly. Now, for the sake of transparency, this watch was generously provided by Zelos, and as far as I know, they're not going to ask for it back. Pretty much every time I talked to them this year, I inquired if there was an update on the Nova, so when it was ready, they knew I had an interest, and asked if I'd like to review it. There are six different colorways of the Nova, and I think one of the coolest things about this entire collection is that each watch is not only a different color, but a completely different pattern or texture. So there's a lot of variety here, but the downside for reviewing it is that I think with the Nova more than any other watch I've reviewed is that each colorway is going to have a very different feel and experience from the others. So some of my opinions here on the espresso brown version might not apply to the rest, like say the salmon or linen. So first off, Zealous decided to go with a classically sized watch here, at 38mm wide without, and 40 and a half with the crown. You also have a rather short lug to lug of 44, and it's incredibly thin at 8.9. I know the site says 8.5, but I've been getting 8.9 when I go from the case back all the way to the top of the crystal, and about one and a half of that is due to the box style sapphire crystal. Regardless of the reasons, it's still amazingly thin. I mean, this is quartz territory. So combine that with its classically sized dimensions and a fairly light weight of 60 grams with its strap, or only 110 with its bracelet, and you have a watch you can easily and comfortably wear all day, even with long sleeves and a jacket. Yet thanks to its wide expansive dial, I don't think it ever felt small at all which is something I noticed when I was switching between it and one of the new 40mm Seiko 5s. Visually, I think the dial has a similar presence, just in a smaller package. Now, along the same lines, I appreciate that Zelos kept this as a modern interpretation, rather than go full vintage. As even though it's a 38mm sized watch, lug width is still 20mm inside its short yet angular lugs. So, you're going to have plenty of strap options. And I think it shows off some of its tool watch heritage, with 100 meters of water resistance. So you're going to worry more about the leather strap getting wet than the watch itself. The case is a stainless steel with a nice brushed finishing. Circular on the top and bottom, with the sides having a vertical finish, and I think that shows off just how thin this case is. Now the interesting thing to me is that the case is entirely brushed. It's not until you run into the clean bezel do you get any sort of polished finish. And that's where the watch really plays with the light, as it's not only polished on both the side and top of that bezel, but it sits right next to the edge of the box crystal. And all of that just catches and reflects the light beautifully. And the end result is that your eyes are immediately drawn to the elements that frame the dial, rather than the case itself. Which I think is a bit different. Most dress watches I've seen have more of a polished finish to them, or if the sides are brushed, then the top has a mirror-like finish. So I think the case of the Nova has more of an understated feel, at least compared to other dress watches I've seen, and perhaps more of a vintage vibe to it. And that's not to say the case is boring in any way, it's just different, which is especially true when you throw it on its bracelet. Along the same lines of the case, that bracelet is mostly brushed, with only a small polished beveled edge on the side of each link. Now each link is fully articulated and overall rather geometric, which means even though it's mostly brushed, all those different angles catch the light beautifully. So it's definitely not boring, just again a little different. We'll talk more about the bracelet and the strap later on but I will point out that there may be a small clash of styles here. Overall, I think it works, but for me, I get more of a 50s or 60s vibe from the watch, while more of a 70s vibe from the bracelet. Anyway, let's get back to the case. 
Now on the right, you have a small but very usable signed crown, while on the back, there is an exhibition case back. And here, you can clearly see the beautiful 7001 mechanical movement, complete with a nice finishing and blued screws. Overall, it's a beautifully made case, but there's one thing that I found I think could be considered an oversight. The clearance between the spring bar and the case isn't great, but it is okay enough to add a variety of straps. So a few days after I switched the strap to one that's a bit thicker, I noticed some extra wear on where that strap would meet that section of the case. So I think one of the edges was left too sharp. And then I took a closer look at the stock strap and noticed just a little bit of wear there as well. Now every watch and every strap are going to be a little bit different, and there may be a lot of Novas out there that won't even have this issue. So I think it's kind of hard to fault Zealous for something they may not have even run into. But I just wanted to make sure that all of you are aware, and if you are planning to use a nicer, thicker leather strap, then just to be careful with it, as this one may literally be a strap monster. And I think this is a great example of why I don't review a watch until I've worn it for a while, because if I had just turned the camera on right after opening the box, I never would have noticed this. On to the dial, and the dial is stunning. As I've said, every Nova is different, and this is the Espresso Brown Deep Sunburst version, which I know some people are going to see this and immediately think of Seiko's Cocktail Time. Now, I don't have the brown version of the Cocktail Time, but I do have a blue, and while the dial style is similar, there are some distinct differences. Both have a color gradient that gets darker as you go to the edges, yet the Nova's ridges are deeper and sharper. I think the Nova is more like viewing a piece of Art Deco or Gilded Age architecture, compared to the smoother kaleidoscope of colors that just blend together like a peacock's tail for the cocktail time. Now on the Nova, the hour indices are narrow wedges, each with a small cutout filled with white loom. And I know some will say that loom has no place on a dress watch, but I can say here it does add some needed contrast, just to help easily identify those indices, even if they are surrounded by detailed train track chapter ring in white. Without those loom centers, these polished metal indices just blend into the bronze supernova that is the backdrop, which I think is exactly what happens to the logo, which might not have been intended, but it does give the dial a rather clean look as there's no distracting text anywhere on the dial, just the logo which is then balanced out by a sub-second dial at the 6. And that sub-second dial is clearly defined by breaking up that deep sunburst pattern for more of a circular one. The hands are small sticks, again complete with loom. And overall, I think it blends in nicely with the indices, and I think they are the perfect length. The hour hand just going to the edge of those indices and the minute hand breaching right into that chapter ring. Overall, it's just beautifully done, and just amazing to see in person. Yet even with that, I think this might be the most understated Nova available, which I know sounds kind of crazy when you're looking at pictures like this. But hear me out. The thing is with this particular dial is that it's gorgeous and mesmerizing up close. Yet in lower lighted conditions or from across the room, it's still a good looking watch, but you don't see all the texture, just a slight bronze sunburst. And I think that, combined with the understated case, make this a rather unusual dress watch. One that might be more for you to enjoy, rather than garner attention. Which is why I think Seiko went with rose gold for their brown version, just to up that pizzazz factor on the level of their other colorways. And the understatement here isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just depends on what you're looking for in a watch. And for me, I think it's something I've come to appreciate, as I think it makes it much more versatile, as it turns it into something you could wear more often, rather than something that only looks okay with a suit. In fact, over the last month, I've been more concerned that the black strap looks okay with what I'm wearing, rather than the watch itself. Now, as for the loom, well, this is a dress watch, so I think for some it's not needed, yet still appreciated, and for others, it's just a damn dirty distraction. For me, it really depends on the design, and I do like it here. There isn't a lot of surface area available, but they did a great job of utilizing what they had. It's not overly bright, but going into a dark room, the indices in the hands are just fine points of light that are easy to identify. Now, as this is a dress watch, I almost didn't do a comparison, 
but I don't really think it'd be relative time without one. And the Nova is surprisingly good, far outlasting the Orient and Neb and a Vostok Diver. So I'd say the Loom is good for any watch, but great for a dress watch. So as for the mechanical movement, it's a top grade Eta Passau 7001. And this is the first time I've seen one, so I'll have a link down in the description for more info. But the short version is that it's a well-proven movement. I think it's been around since 1971. And during that time, it's been used in or used as the basis in a lot of high-end and luxury level watches. Primarily when they're looking to make one that's rather thin, as the movement itself is only 2.5 millimeters tall. Now the movement is only a standard beat rate, and there is no hacking. But it does have a 42 hour power reserve, and since this is a top grade movement, the spec should be within plus or minus 4 to 15 seconds a day. And personally, I was seeing about 3.5, so no complaints here. Now the Nova comes with both a strap and a bracelet. And since we've already talked a little bit about the bracelet, we might as well continue. Overall, it's pretty nice. It has solid end links and screwed in links that are fully articulating, not to mention a nice butterfly clasp. Overall, it's very well made, and just like the watch, it's amazingly thin. Because it's so thin, I think it does have a delicate quality to it, but I think it has a great build quality, so you don't need to worry about it. Overall, it's just a great bracelet, and I think it's more a question on if you think the style works or if it clashes with the watch. As I think the bracelet is a bit more tool-like than dress, and just like the watch, it's mostly brushed. But here you do have a small polished edge that runs along the side of each link. And at this point, you're probably sick of me saying it. But again, I think it has an understated feel to it compared to your typical dress watch. Which I think works with this brown version specifically and especially if you're looking to wear it without a suit. But I'm not sure about the other colorways. The only downside to the bracelet that I found is that I wish they'd included a couple of half lengths. It's a butterfly clasp, so there's no micro adjustment holes, and my seven inch wrist seems to be right in the middle of two sizes. With three links removed, it's really loose, and with four, it's a little tight, but still wearable. Which leads us to the black leather strap and it's a great quality strap, as it's black chromexal horween leather, and I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that. It's incredibly soft to the touch, and it has a nice thickness, which gives it a sturdy feeling without feeling too stiff, and it's also quick release. And I think the style is more of a refined strap than what typically comes with Zellos, but I think the color choice black might be a bit boring, at least for some of these dials. But if you are talking a dress watch, then it is safer and more appropriate to go with a black strap. Yet, no matter what strap or bracelet you throw on the Nova, I think it's not only going to look great, but be extremely comfortable as well. Just remember that this particular strap monster might have some teeth. Lastly, I always like to say a brief word about value, but I think this one is kind of tricky. Now, the introductory price is $769 but if it hasn't already, it will soon be jumping up to $899, which is full MSRP. So this is one of the more expensive Zelos releases, which is one of the reasons I think it's more for the hardcore fans than, say, someone new to the brand, as it's a bit of money to sink into something you're not familiar with. And along the same lines, I think this is going to be a bit too expensive for a lot of the affordable watch fans out there, who Zelos has developed a good reputation with thanks to their Swordfish line. Now, I think a lot of the cost for the Nova is because of the movement. And if you were to look for watches with a 7001, they're going to be at least this much. And a lot of them are a bit over a thousand bucks. So this is definitely premium watch territory. And with that in mind, I think the price that Zealous is charging is rather reasonable. But if you don't really care about any of that and you just want something similar, well, the obvious choice here is going to be Seiko's cocktail time where some versions are going for half as much as the Nova. And whatever voodoo magic Seiko puts into these cocktail time dials just works. They really are amazing. Although I think it's worth pointing out that the biggest complaints when it comes to the cocktail time, namely size and hard looks crystal, really aren't an issue with the Nova. The Espresso Nova is not your typical dress watch, and that may limit some of its appeal. It's still gorgeous and captivating to look at, Yet it's not one that's going to immediately grab someone's attention from across the room. 
it's a bit more understated than that. From a distance, it's just a thin watch with a nice dark brown dial. It's not until you get up close that you're hit with the full impact. So it's more a watch for you to personally enjoy than one for you to show off. And I think a lot of that might be due to its tool watch ancestry in its lineage. And that is something I really love about the Nova. Not only is it thin and lightweight, but it's also durable enough you really don't need to worry about it if you get caught in the rain. As well as being gorgeous, yet understated enough that it doesn't look out of place in jeans and a t-shirt. Or shorts and sandals like I've been doing for the last month. Which I think makes it something you can wear more on a daily basis, rather than just special occasions. And that I think is key to understanding the Espresso Brown Nova, and especially when you're spending this much on a watch as I'm not really a fan of safe queens that only get taken out once or twice a year. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the Nova, and specifically the Espresso Brown version. It's kind of hard to say without seeing them in person, but I'm not sure I'd say the same things about the Salmon or Linen. But what do you think about the Zelos Nova? Let me know down below. Or if you can think of any other dress watches I should take a look at, let me know as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.